Deadwood, South Dakota is an interesting town full of history and mystery. An employee of the Bullock Hotel, who goes by the name Kitty McCauley, spoke about the history of the town and the hotel she works for. Miss Kitty is a bartender and also leads the Haunted Hotel Tour on Mondays and Tuesdays. Can you give me a brief history of Deadwood? Deadwood was, uh, started to be settled in 1876, and it was because of the discovery of gold in 1874. Uh, because of the Laramie Treaty, this town was outlaw since its inception. Um, it wasn't right for people to be here, only the Native Americans were allowed in this area. What most people don't realize, though, is that the Laramie Treaty was a very vast, it covered a very vast amount of land, so it was everything between the Missouri River and the Rockies and everything north and south. But, uh, so, uh, that being said, uh, we didn't have any standing outposts or militia uh, soldiers that were here to, that, that would have been able to stop the inflow of people who are now coming here because of the gold. People flooded into Deadwood for the gold and settled down. It wasn't always smooth living, though. So again, Mr. Seth Bullock, uh, having the wherewithal, um, the, the experiences that he had in Helena uh, with fire in mold camps, a very high probability of fire, a lot of combustible materials, the buildings were put in, people heated with uh, lanterns that used oil, and of course, uh, we used uh, wood, coal, and high probability for fire. So what happened here in 18... Well, first I'm going to show you the town of 1879. So we go from 1876, a few hundred people, to 1879, where we now have 10 to 12,000 people living here. That is a very, very vast uh, rate of growth for people in this town. But as you can see, the storefronts in most of the buildings are wooden. Came the fire now of 1879. This is an enlarged uh, photograph of the downtown area of uh, Deadwood. And as you can see, the devastation is widespread. So quickly the town rebuilt once again uh, with wooden storefronts, even though Seth Bullock uh, strongly suggested to folks who had businesses on Main Street that they either build stone style or at least build themselves a fireproof like what he had. They did not. They uh, built again with uh, uh, wooden storefronts. And in this picture here, we can see um, a couple of folks did heed his warning and they attempted to build a fireproof, but the problem was if you didn't put a proper roof on this, which is also as thick as the walls, the insides, if they were combustible, could blow out this way. Here, this building right here is the fireproof that is underneath us today, still intact. Now what happened during this fire is there was a bakery where the Bullock parking lot is today and a lantern tipped over. That building caught on fire and the embers flew over here and quickly ignited the hardware store. Sadly, that day the boys had eight cakes of blasting powder on the property. So you can see there's a blast that went this direction in this photograph. That side of the street was okay, but it also damaged. The, the, the fronts of the buildings were, um, uh, you know, of course, scarred and singed from the blast. But this building is now underneath us and fully intact. So what happened after this, the folks got plumb sick and tired of cleaning up the messes from the fires and floods. There's a building. There is. Oh, yeah. Yep, there, there yeah, sure is. is. And we're going to go inside and examine that. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, since it was stood glass, you can see there's nothing else around it that really survived. But he built his proper, and it became, he thought, well, yeah, we're going to build right, right on top of it. We'll build the hotel right on top. And that's, uh, so now the level of Deadwood is about here today. The Bullock Hotel was built by Seth Bullock. But who exactly was this Seth Bullock? Who exactly was Seth Bullock? Seth Bullock was our very first sheriff. Um, originally on this property, he came to Deadwood to set up a small hardware store. So he did that, but when he saw uh, the rough and tumble ways that were, things that were happening here that were very troublesome to him, he did uh, take it upon himself after Well Bill Hickok was shot and killed in particular to try to lay down the law and settle these folks down. So um, later on, he was our first marshal, and a little after that, he became our first uh, national park ranger. After that, he was uh, he accompanied Teddy Roosevelt to the Spanish-American Wars. He led, he was head of the Rough Riders, Teddy's Rough Riders, and after that, he became bodyguard to President Roosevelt. Bullock was a kind man in a rough town. So why are haunted hotel tours held in his hotel? Why are the ghost tours held here? Um, <clears throat> the property is haunted by uh, Seth Bullock, 
and many, many other, call them other uh, entities, because Seth opened this, this floor, this would have been the ground floor of the, the building back in 1876, to the women and children who were suffering with the smallpox epidemic. He knew that they would probably die here, but he was being the kind man that he was, he wanted to give them some sort of comfort and protect them from the elements. So the men were tented, uh, set in tents up on the hillside and quarantined up there, and he housed the women and children here. Many, many of them did die here, and we believe that they still are here with us today. Children don't really have a concept of death, so they are just, um, they're still here. You mentioned that the children are here because they don't really have any concept of death. Do you know why Seth would haunt this place? From all the psychics that I've worked with in the past, um, they do say or tell me that if, if a place is, was very, very important to a person in their living life, that it is very possible that they will stay there. And, and we believe Seth is here because it was his duty to look after this town and the folks in it. He was very proud of this hotel. Um, he likes to make sure that people are on task and doing their jobs. Um, he does tend to make his presence known if he thinks we're slacking off. Um, he's very watchful and protective, and I just think this, is, this was the, the place that made him happy. The building was last purchased in 1998 and was remodeled for the modern conveniences of a modern hotel. Mary Schmidt bought the building and was doing some restoration work on it. Um, the original hotel had 68 rooms and shared bathrooms because plumbing and electricity were, were new at the time, back in the day when this was first built. So, but that wasn't very convenient for today's world. So what she did is she was doing the restoration project where she combined two small rooms and added a period looking bathroom, but of course with modern conveniences. During this time, I was dating the fellow who was in charge of the restoration project. And the crew would be calling him during the day and saying, you really need to get these kids off the third floor. They are uh, flexing around with the tools, they're moving the tool cart around, they're running up and down the hallways. This is a dangerous situation. So we had to eventually tell the crew that there are no children up there. And of course they argued the fact. And it wasn't until the workers actually saw the children running back and forth outside the third floor windows. There is no balcony. And yes, many crew members quit at that point. On the haunted hotel tour, Miss Kitty takes tour goers through the hotel, showing them the original front door, taking them onto the original sidewalk, as well as showing them Seth's office and fireproof. So beneath us would have been Seth's office. I'm going to take you into his office space, and uh, I want you to pay attention to the materials that were used down there, the building materials, because they match identically to what's down that staircase over there. In this block, there was all kinds of bad things going on. So there was over a hundred round-the-clock hurdy-gurdies, dance parlors, gaming halls, houses of ill repute, and brothels. So what Seth did is, when he first put on the star, right after uh, Wild Bill was assassinated, he threw a line in the dirt here with his boot heel, and he said, any of you boys head on down to them badlands, don't ask me for help. So what he did is he sat in his office and he watched. He heard the gunfire, he heard the screaming, he could see people fighting, but he didn't go down there. He waited for them to cross the line, then he'd throw him in the who's gal and ask questions later. Well, that jail got filled up pretty quick, so he had to put out an order to build a new jail, a bigger one, of course. And then he decided to start vetting these guys out meanwhile. So the real bad guys, the killers, would have been held in the cell down there. Um, I do want you to go have a look at that when you've got your own time to. When you're headed down the stairs, you look to the left, there's a, a window with bars on it. Straight ahead, another window with bars on it. When you get to the bottom of the stairs, pull the signs away from the door, see that the, uh, the door has bars on it as well. It's an L-shaped cell. So when he started vetting these guys out, there's a, he built a long hallway that, that kind of bends off to the right from this jail cell. And in here, he, uh, he held the derelicts and the drunks and he plumped the handcuffs into the wall until they sobered up and then he turned loose and went to the next one. And it was indeed the second busiest hallway in all of Denver. The first, of course, being the brothel hallways. So here we have, this is the top of one of the old windows would have been exposed at uh, street level. Of course, it's bricked in now. And if you move back this way, here's another one. Mm -hmm. And like you can see right around here, you notice the color in the, the brick changes. These two drops from the gray to the tan. The tan is 
the old fire proof. So this is the store. You can see it's one third, two thirds is the storage space the fire proof. You can approach this, uh, this bus and it really does look like the eyes are bluish gray. Uh, oftentimes I love the building at night and I'd swear, I'd swear those eyes are watching. It, and I do believe they are. It's definitely the best in the building. Oh, can we get downstairs? You can see how big the fire proof is and admire the, the brickwork. It's really something else. This would have all been built by hand. <clears throat> so as we come back here, I want you to notice up here too, uh, the original beams are still here and they're still uh, scarred from the fire. And here there's blast mark along the rocks. So this is all he, he just simply built on top of it. And again, the walls are about that wide. I want you to notice this is the same steel and puff work that is used in the jail across the street. So when you go down there, you're going to see the same, same kind of uh, work up here. And I'm going to open this door. Because some of Seth's original personal items are in here. This is, again, really rough. But I just want you to see. Don't worry about that. I'm sorry, broken. <laughs> <laughs> this was a crate that belonged to Seth back here. This is a, an old dynamite crate that is addressed to Ayers Hardware. Ayers Hardware actually held office space here on the second floor, and they were heavy constructors. So they, they, were, the, they were the ones doing a lot of the quarry work, the block work, the brick work, uh, masonry that uh, was uh, responsible for building the buildings that we see today. The crates belong to Seth. Uh, there's an old uh, ammo case back there. So these were some of his personal items. And now we're going to move this way. We will now be on the <clears throat> original sidewalk. And over here we have an old uh, ammo slash loading box with the slit in the top. That's original. Uh, down here by Dusty we have an old vault. And this, these are the street side windows. And here again we have the steel, steel and puck work that you're going to see above the jail. But we're now on the original sidewalk of town. Under the instructions of Miss Kitty, I was able to get some video of what she calls orbs, proof of the presence of other entities. That's dust. Yes. There, that's there. not dust. Here, guys, look at this. You want to see the difference between dust and an orb? Here she's got tons of dust coming up off the carpet. You see this? But mixed in there, you've got something else. Miss Kitty further explained that the dust moves at a constant speed, while the orbs float at changing speeds, while also changing directions. It is easy to see the difference between dust particles and orbs due to the fact that orbs are perfectly round and move in their own ways, unaffected by air currents. As well as the shape and directional movement of the orbs, it is possible to follow the movements of them with the eye. While some sections of this video are slowed down to make it easier to follow them, once seen, it is hard to look away and not notice other orbs floating around. Here in the basement, there is plenty of dust, as Miss Kitty pointed out. However, as she also pointed out, the orbs are plentiful and moving leisurely at different speeds from each other and from the dust particles in the air. Any camera phone with flash can catch these orbs, though taking pictures of them may prove to be slightly more difficult. Tour goers not only saw orbs through their phones, but stood behind Miss Kitty so that she could point out more orbs to them as well. The feeling in the basement was not one of fear, but of awe and respect. So what days and times are the tour, and how much does it cost? The tour is every evening at 5 o'clock, and it's $10 for an adult and $5 for a child. You can also arrange custom tours if you prefer a different time and a different day. Simply call ahead and uh, let the, let the uh, proprietor know so they can make arrangements and have a tour guide available. The unique thing about De Deadwood is that it's an outlaw town. Always has been. You know, there was a famous uh, journalist in town, Rena. She she said that uh, most towns are made up of 10% uh, uh, characters, and the rest are kind of normal folk. And Deadwood, still today, is exactly the opposite history. <laughs>